You're at uh, King's Mill Cider. My name is Case Morsink, and uh, we run King's Mill Cider. I run it with, with my wife, Margaret, in Alfort, and we're in Sterling, Ontario. And we have uh, eight different ciders for you to try today, and uh, we've been making ciders for, oh, about six or seven years. We've opened our cidery a month ago, so the 21st of April, and uh, so far things are going very well. So we have still ciders. We will be doing carbonated ciders in about... Uh, uh, about two or three weeks. We have the equipment that just came in. So we'd like to try some ciders. Definitely. Uh, well, take us through what you have for an offering. How's okay, well, that? we'll start uh, driest to sweetest. So we'll start with our scrumpy. Our scrumpy is a English style cider. It's not for everybody. It's a completely bone dry. So I'll let you try that one first. I'll just grab a couple of glasses. So this is our first one. So 100% bone dry, English style cider. But we get apples a little all over. We have about a uh, thousand apple trees planted here, but they're not giving yet. We've had them for two years now. So we're in our third year of production. Um, we got a lot of apples from the county and nearby here, county, uh, Brighton, areas like that. And uh, we also, had uh, experimental apples from Omafra, and that's where we got the highly tannic apples, and that's what's going into the scrumpy. Mm -hmm. So and that's what gives it that, uh, that scrumpy flavor. So, but it's been filtered, so it's not an unfiltered scrumpy, so there's no pieces of, uh, of apple floating in it or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And then our next uh, one would be a arrested development, and we call that because we have a yeast that kicks out at about, uh, about 8% alcohol, so it leaves a bit of sweetness in the, uh, in the cider, so this is more French style. So you try that one. Cheers. So this is made with russets, wine saps, uh, Tolman sweets, mostly heritage apples. Excellent. I think that one's one of the favorites that we've had on the the sampling so far, which is quite nice. It's um, still has a bit of the acidity to it, right? Obviously, mm -hmm. and some of the dryness, but there's a lot of full flavor in the apples. Uh, you, what which type of apple was it? Uh, wine saps, russets, Tolman sweets, a bit of ambrosia, and some northern spy. Okay, so a nice big blend of different types. Yeah, yeah. and mostly heritage apples. Yeah, and our next one is our premium dry. So this is kind of one of our commercial. We have a premium dry and a premium. That's more our commercial runs that we're using for bars. This would go into kegs, for example. So this one is about our premium dry is about half the sweetness of our premium. And our premium is still, when we're talking about sweet, we're talking about a third of summer bees. We're talking uh, not too sweet, so compared to most of You can try that one if you like, a little shot. Cheers on that. Thoughts? It's different, but it would appeal to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, very good. Yeah, it's, um, it doesn't have the, the sugar, as you say, but it's... Mm -hmm does have a touch of sweetness, yeah. Mm -hmm. right? So it's almost a semi-dry in some ways. Yeah. Also, well, that's our dry is probably a semi-dry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. also, and then um, that's for our premium dry. And then the premium is sweeter, but you'll see that it's nicely balanced with the acidity. So it doesn't uh, seem that sweet. So next we go to our hopped. Our hopped is uh, one of our favorites. So let's see if you enjoy this one. This is done with uh, two different hops. So all our products are from Ontario, of course, the apples and the hops. So we're getting uh, different hops from a, a farm near Ottawa. And uh, they produce, uh, so this is Cascade and Pearl that are in this one. Okay. Yeah. Now, if I remember correctly, that was my favorite when we had a, when you were up at County and the Capital in Ottawa. Mm -hmm. uh, has a nice balance, but, um, and we talked about it there I think uh, we'll put it down onto onto audio now it's um, the balance is there the hops come through but they're not overpowering mm -hmm. whereas if you were to go for some of the other types of hops that you historically find in in a beer or so they are very forward mm -hmm. and this is a really nice balanced sort of process to it so uh, you said you source them you source them locally then or well, they're from Ottawa so okay. near Collingwood area yeah so and we're looking at different people that are growing hops here, but uh, the hop industry in Ontario is very young, mm -hmm. so it takes three years for the hops to produce. So we do have a producer here nearby who's going to do hops for us, so within uh, four kilometers. Oh, nice. So uh, our next one. Is plan, plans for hops here? Um, yes, 
I would like to put a few hops in there. We'll see what uh, what happens, but uh, everything takes time. You know? Yes, everything takes time. completely. So I'll pass on mine okay. for now. Okay, so this is the ginger. And uh, actually, I'll, I'll have the ginger. I like the ginger. Just have a little taste. Just yeah. okay. I'll give you a wee little bit. That yeah. much. Perfect. Okay. So the ginger is sourced from Small Spade Farms, which is about four kilometers from here, and they actually grow ginger in a greenhouse. So we've got the ginger for them, and we they're producing for us next year too. So we'll be doing a larger, uh, a larger inventory of uh, ginger next year. Mm -hmm. And again, also earthy, but not quite in your face. Yeah, right? we're not trying to overpower anybody, you know. Just so we still want the apple to come through, and this one is really refreshing on ice. Mm -hmm. So very, very nice, and uh, people seem to enjoy that. So the ginger has been very popular so far. With the uh, the more still based cider, was there a plan? You said you were looking at putting it to doing some of the the carbonation and so on. Is there uh, ones that you're specifically looking at doing? Yes, or? we're looking at the premium dry, the premium, and the hopped. That's what we're going to start with. So then uh, we have bars that are asking for that. So we want to do kegs. So we have kegs, uh, and we'll be doing the kegs. I think within uh, two weeks. So. And then we'll go on to our premium, and like I said, the premium is our sweetest cider, but not that sweet. So it's fairly, uh... That's not mine. Okay. I'll give you a little shot here. Like I said, it's sweet, but it's got a little more acidity in it, so we put a bit of mac there to bring in that acidity to kind of balance it out. And that one's very, very nice and nice too. So a lot of people like it on ice during the summer. Somehow water gives a bit of drinkability, it improves the the way it goes down. So mm -hmm. it's, uh, and we've definitely found that with some ciders definitely have a, a better taste on ice, mm -hmm. depending on where you're looking at. Often it will take away, especially um, if it's um, carbonated or so, it will pull away from the overall flavor. Mm -hmm. Some balance nicely as well. Uh, I think the still ciders are, are better colder. Mm -hmm. in that nature from what we've gotten in the past so but i agree it's uh it's an interesting way to be able to look at and add a different flavor to it or be able to change the palate just a little bit but enough so that if you prefer one or the other it, it's a good fit there do you um so what got you into to making cider oh i've been uh, i worked overseas in africa for about uh, 10 years with the un and we actually brewed quite a bit over there the Comoro islands we distilled and we uh, uh, we made uh, wine and beer and things like that because it was a bit difficult to get uh, liquor at that point. So we did do a lot of stuff ourselves. So I've been brewing for, oh, I'd say almost 30 years. So making, either brewing or fermenting, making wine or cider or fermenting uh, or making beer. So, so it was just uh, for fun. And then uh, we were doing for about, uh, these recipes, you said we, we have eight uh, ciders that we just opened, which is quite a bit, but we've been playing this for about uh, about eight years. So it's taken quite a while. I had, uh, I must have did about 200 different recipes and these are the eight that are left. So. Which which is interesting because also we have saw the giant boom here in, auto, in um, Ontario with mm -hmm. the fact that uh, a lot of people suddenly decided, okay, well, cider seems to be taking off. There's a lot of interest, it's growing in popularity. And that's why coming out with already uh, and I would say I would call it a matured um, lineup is very interesting unique because a lot of the new cideries that are just starting up are putting in a lot of content or putting out some stuff that's that's new but not necessarily refined or right quite the fit of, of you know the quality that, that you're offering which is really neat and uh, I think that sort of comes along the line with a lot of the discussions that we've we've had everyone saying okay have you have you gone to King's Mills yet have you had a chance to chat with them and try them because there seems to be a lot of discussion which is great news for you as well um, but it also puts maybe a little bit of interesting well, not pressure but um, puts you into uh, the cider family uh, a little quicker mm -hmm. I think as well and expectations coming forward with that so do you, is this now a, a full-time job? Is this no, where you're I'm, going or? We actually have another company. So that's what's actually paying for this at the moment. You know, you're not really making any money at the beginning, but uh, we, we'd like to get, this is more a retirement business where I'd like to do this as a kind of a semi-business and uh, keep that going. So, um, but uh, we have one more for you. I almost forgot, we have an ice cider. So our ice cider's been very, very popular and um, 
it was a bit difficult during our first vintage like that doing a ice cider, but we thought we'd try it. Um, our ice cider is quite nice. You just try a tiny bit. Just like, it's not that sweet. What we've done is we've worked on the acidity. So we've added a little more acidity kind of thing, bring it up with Mac and ambrosias and that. So it's not kind of syrupy like a, an ice wine. And we found that a lot of people really appreciate that because they find the ice wines a bit too thick. So. Yeah, and it's definitely a lighter offering, right, mm -hmm. than most ice ciders that we've we've come across or, or anything of that nature, but it still has a lot of full flavor to it, which is really quite nice as well. But so. we bring down about 1,000 liters to about 250 liters, so it goes one to four. So it's about 25% of the original content of the, the juice. Yeah. So, so it's, it's been very, very popular, so we've really enjoyed this one. So is there a, a, a theme or a way that you've come up with some of the different plans or has it sort of just been, okay, well, why don't we try this and try that and try that and then kind of come down, as you said, from the 200 to the 8? Well, before I even, we even started brewing like that, I had everything on paper that I wanted to do. So I actually had the names and everything. I wanted to do a scrumpy, a rest, I had a, a few English people ask me to do more an English type cider because they found it very difficult to get here. So I thought I'd do that. And then the French cider, I like myself a lot. So that's why I wanted to do a French style cider. And then we just thought uh, a premium and a premium dry kind of thing, more for the bars, like just uh, an offering like that. And then ginger came by with having the neighbors here that are growing ginger. So we found that right away. And then I thought a hop cider would be fun. Mm -hmm. I was drinking beer with my brother one time and I had a very floral, IPA that was really really nice so that was uh, I thought oh that'd be interesting with cider so we thought we'd throw that in and then we'll also be doing we're growing rhubarb here we have cherries growing in the orchard uh, we have wild strawberries we have strawberries we have uh, a bit of everything so we'll start being doing different plants too so you'll see new things coming up and and what is the the rest of the farm like like your acreage and we have 32 acres here and we're right beside the King's Mill Conservation Area and uh, it's quite a beautiful place. We have a lot of, uh, if we go to the back, there's, uh, I'll be making, actually, I'm working on a, a recipe for European bitters. So more with uh, local plants here. So I'm looking at different plants. I've been experimenting with a few things there. I've been doing fermentation for years. So even when I was in Africa, I was doing yogurts all the time, sauerkrauts, different things like that. So this is kind of came in as a natural thing, just uh, doing more fermentations and, and playing around with things. And I love experimenting, so. And you landed on the cider as the, the way to experiment, which is pretty neat. Yeah, I was looking at it one time, I was thinking about possibly a winery, but the land is not good for that here. So we're a bit too far off the lake. It's a uh, it's, uh, limestone soil, so it's, it's good for that. And apples were really big in the area here before. So we thought we'd start planting some apples. We were started with some wild apples that we found here and there. And there's a lot of old orchards in the area here too. So we'll be getting apples out of there for this year too. So. Has there been a challenge in sourcing products for you, or has it been, you know, a, a able to find in the area already? There are some that are getting very difficult because everybody wants russets, of course, you know, so they're all looking for, for different and more the traditional apples around here, but they're, they're hard to find. You know, it's, it's, there's not really growers like in the States. In, for example, upstate New York, that's where I went to, to school. I went to Cornell to take courses there for cider. And, uh, and there, it's very different. The cider industry is more mature than it is here. And they're actually growing Kingston Blacks and, and Michelin and Fréquin Rouge and different cider apples that uh, they brought from France and from England. Here it's starting, so we're, we're seeing a bit of it here. We've actually planted a bunch of brown snout, Kingston Black. Uh, we've got uh, Fréquin Rouge. We've got... Uh, uh, it's Garlington Mills. Uh, so we have a few different uh, cider apples we've planted. We did about 600 grafts last year. Hmm. So that's uh, that's all in the park back here. So I figure within uh, five or six years, we'll have all different kinds of apples to play with. So that's what we want, just to be able to play with different things and experiment and, and put out a good product. Have you been in the area here for a while? About 19 years. Okay, so it's uh, a home and then everything sort of built around that those aspects, which is quite nice. How is the community been receptive to what you've Very done. Very receptive. We've got a lot of help. We have the Cooney Apple Farm, which is on the next road here, and they've been helping us with storing of, uh, of cider, and they have freezers there and coolers. They've been helping us out an awful lot. And uh, and we have a lot of local farms. And uh, like yesterday, I had some uh, juice come in, so I had a local farmer come in with his tractor and helping unload from the truck, you know, so it's just, uh, it's been very good. And that's what we'd like to do within five years. We'd like to expand the business and hire people because we are in a very depressed area here where uh, there's not that many jobs. So we're actually hoping that in the future we can uh, create a bit of employment at the same time and give back to the community.
which is a, a very noble and honorable thing to look at doing, especially with the fact that uh, this the sector itself is growing and there's, uh, I don't know if we would say competition or not. I think there's a lot of people getting involved in it. Do you view it as competition or do you view it as a, people working towards sort of just growing the branding of and the, the enjoyment of cider? Well, I think the more people that create cider here, the more people will come into the area and the more we'll sell. It's good for all of us. So as long as people are creating a good product, then it's great. And our product is very different. We have a still cider, which is, a, and we're doing it in wine bottles, and uh, there, there's maybe one or two others doing it, but not many. So it's a, so it's a different product. So everyone has a bit of a different product, so, which I think is good. What would you say has been your biggest challenge so far? The amount of uh, work at some time. Like just the, for example, like when we're going to bottle, we have to filter, we have to do all those things. So sometimes you're putting in, uh, you know, 16 hour days and just, it's, it's a long process. You just can't stop and continue on later. So once, once you start, you want to finish the whole process. So that's been a bit difficult, but uh, you know, it's, it's part of it, right? So yeah. And if you're working uh, as well, a normal nine to five, it adds some more challenges to it too. So. Oh, that's it. So we have a job. Our other job too is a very open job. We have our own business. So we have a jewelry business. I'm a gemologist by trade. So we, uh, so we can do, uh, we can work the hours we want. So we can kind of play with it with the cider, which is very good. Sounds like a nice balance to be able to work towards ourselves. So. Oh, it is. It is. So. Uh, I, if people are interested in sampling what you have, where is the product available or how can they get in touch with you? They can come to our, our tasting room at 596 Kings Mill Road, Sterling, Ontario. We're open every Saturday and Sunday, 11 to 6. They can also order online at kingsmillcider.ca. So there's a, a shop online. And then uh, we hope within, let's say, a year, we'll have a few products at LCBO. So we're not really pushing that right now, but I, probably our ice cider will go with the LCBO. And we'll see what's going on there. Excellent. Interesting, because they don't really do many ice ciders there as well. Oh, so it. hopefully that will be a new avenue as well that we'll get to start to see some new product as well. So yeah, thank you so much for your time. Well, thank, thank you for coming by.